The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain. Chapter 32. Which of them is the king? The Lord Protector thought some time, then he turned to the stranger and said, I wish to ask you a question. If you answer it correctly, then you are the king. If you can't answer it, you will be arrested. Your answer will decide everything. The question is this where does the great seal lie? Only the Prince of Wales can answer it. Only he can know it. It is not difficult to answer this question, answered the lad. Then he turned and gave this command, My Lord Saint John. Go to my cabinet in the palace, and in the left-hand wall you will find a nail head. Press upon it, and the wall will open a little. The first thing you will see in the opening will be the great seal. Bring it here. Tom Canty looked at Lord St. John and said, Why do you not go? Have you not heard the king's command? Go. Lord St. John bowed and left. In a few minutes he came back and said to Tom, Your Majesty, the seal is not there. Throw the beggar into the street and give him a good whipping, the Lord Protector said. Officers of the guard moved forward to take Edward. But Tom Canty shouted to them, Back! Those who touch him will die. The Lord Protector did not know what to do. He said to Lord St. John softly, Did you look well for it? It is so strange. How could such a big thing as the Seal of England disappear? A big heavy thing, a massive golden disc. When Tom Canty heard these words, he jumped forward and shouted, Wait! That is enough! Was it round and thick? Had it letters and emblems cut upon it? Oh, now I know what this great seal is. And I know where it lies. I am sorry you did not describe it to me before. We could have it three weeks ago. Yes, I know where it lies, but it was not I that put it there, first. Who was it then, your majesty? Asked the Lord Protector. He that stand there, the true King of England and he will tell you himself where it lies. Then you will believe him. Thank, my king, try to think well. It was the last thing which you did that day before you ran out of the palace, dressed in my rags, to punish the soldier who had bruised me. There was a silence for some time. Everybody looked at the stranger, who stood, with bowed head, thinking hard. Moment after moment passed, the moments built themselves into minutes. Still the boy stood silently and said no word. At last he lifted his head, shook it slowly and said in trembling voice, I do not remember where I put it. Oh, my king, cried Tom Canty in a picnic. Wait, think, try to remember. Listen to what I say. I am going to bring that morning back again, every little thing, just as it happened. We talked. I told you about my sister, Nan and Bet. Ah, yes, you remember that. And I told you about my grandmother and about the games of the lads of Awful Court. Yes, you remember these things too. Listen to me and you will remember everything. You gave me food and drink. And sent away the servant. Ah, yes, this also you remember. The story was like true history. The lords and ladies listened to it with great interest. But how could they believe it? How could they believe in a friendship that had come about between a prince and a beggar? Then, my prince, Tom Canty went on, you put on my clothes and I put on yours. We stood before a mirror and were surprised to see that we were so much alike. Yes, you remember that. Then you saw that the soldier had bruised my hand. At this your highness got very angry and ran towards the door to punish the soldier. You passed a table. The thing you call the seal lay on that table. You took it from the table and looked around as if you wanted to find a place to hide it then. That is enough, cried the king. I remember it now. Go, my good Saint John, in an arm piece of the armor that hangs on the wall you will find the seal. That's right, my king, that's right, cried Tom Canty. Now the throne of England is yours. Hurry, my lord St. John, hurry. All the people were on their feet now. 
The great lords and ladies seemed mad. Nobody knew how much time passed. At last street. John appeared upon the platform and held the great seal high up in the air. Then such a short went up. Long live the true king. All Rose and Tom Canty cried out. Now, my king. Take this royal clothing back and give poor Tom, your servant, his rags again. The Lord Protector spoke up. The beggar must be thrown into prison. But the new king, the true king, said, No, I don't allow you to do that. He will not go to prison. It is only because of him that I got my crown back. And as for you, my dear uncle, my Lord Protector, I am surprised you are not thankful to this poor lad. It was he who had made you a duke, wasn't it? Then the king turned to Tom and said kindly, My poor boy. How was it that you could remember where I had hidden the great seal when I could not remember it myself? Ah, my king, that was easy, because I used it many times. Used it? But you could not explain where it was. When they asked about it I did not understand what they wanted I did not know that the thing which I used was the great seal. They did not describe it. Your Majesty. They did not say what it was like. Then how did you use it? Tom's cheeks got red. He dropped his eyes and was silent. Speak up. Good lad. Do not be afraid of anything, said the king. How did you use the great seal of England? I cracked nuts with it.